factors that led to the growth of nationalism in India. Political and administrative unity The British rulers brought about a political and administrative unification of the country. The uniform system of laws and governance brought all Indians under a single system of law. Albert Bill Under the British rule, Indian judges were not allowed to give judgment in cases involving Britishers. The Albert Bill, passed in 1883, provided for the trial of British by Indian judges. The European community opposed the bill and it was withdrawn. This enraged the Indians. The Indian National Congress Mr. A. O. Hume, a retired English officer in the Indian Civil Service, played an important part in bringing Indians from the various regions together and founded the Indian National Congress in 1885. 72 delegates from all over the country met at Bombay in December 1885 and established the Indian National Congress. The early leaders of Congress included Dada Bhai Nauroji, Feroz Shah Mehta, Badruddin Tayyabji, W.C. Banerjee, Surendranath Banerjee, Ramesh Chandradat, S. Subramanya Ayyar. Objectives of the Indian National Congress To bring together the leaders from different parts of the country to discuss the problems faced by the people and to suggest solutions. To request the British to involve Indians in administrative decisions concerning India. To develop the feeling of unity among all Indians by eradicating prejudices based on caste, class, religion or race. To have an organized public opinion in the country. The second session held at Calcutta was presided over by Dada Bhai Nauroji. The Moderates and the Extremists The Moderates, AD 1885 to 1905. During the early years, 1885 to 1905, Congress was led by moderate leaders. Moderates believed in peaceful and constitutional means and placed their demands before the British through speeches, meetings, petitions and resolutions. Some important moderate leaders were Surendranath Banerjee, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Feroz Shah Mehta and D. E. Vacha. Some of the demands of the moderates were Appointment of Indians at high posts and government jobs The civil services examination be held in India as well Legislative councils to be made more representative, given more power and introduced in provinces where none existed Involving Indians in administrative decisions. Withdrawal of Arms Act. Reduction of land revenue imposed on landlords and peasants. Cut in military spending by the government. Partition of Bengal. In 1905, Lord Curzon partitioned Bengal into East Bengal and West Bengal. West Bengal was to comprise of the Hindu majority area and the East Bengal had a large Muslim population. 
Though the British said it was done for administrative efficiency, the real reason behind it was the divide and rule policy of the British. They wanted to weaken the nationalist movement in Bengal by dividing the Hindus and Muslims. Swadeshi Movement and Boycott Movement The partition of Bengal infuriated the Indians. All sections of the Congress, the moderates and the extremists opposed it. The Indian leaders started the Swadeshi and the Boycott Movement on August 7, 1905. Indians were asked to use Swadeshi goods and boycott the British goods and put the foreign goods in bonfires all over the country. The Swadeshi movement gave the extremists the opportunity to lead the nationalist movement. At last, in 1911, the British government had to repeal the partition of Bengal. Formation of the Muslim League, 1906 In 1906, a group of Muslim landlords and Nawabs formed the All India Muslim League under the leadership of Aga Khan. The main aim of the League was to develop a feeling of loyalty to the British, to safeguard the rights and interests of the Muslim to keep the Muslim masses away from the national movement, to make a demand for a separate electorate. The demands of the Muslims were conceded by the government in 1909. Some seats in the council were reserved for Muslims who were to be elected by Muslim voters. The Lucknow Pact, 1916 The Lucknow Pact signed in 1916 was a historic pact. The Congress and the Muslim League decided to work together in their fight for self-rule. The moderates and extremists also united together. Home Rule League, 1916 The First World War started in 1914. The British forced Indians to join their army and participate in the war. Indians hoped that they, too, would be given self-rule after the war. To press their demand for self-rule, Home Rule Leagues were launched between 1915-16 by Bal Gangadhar Tilak in Pune and Eni Besant in Madras. They demanded that India should be granted self-rule after the end of World War I. Lesson 12 The Struggle for Independence 1919-1947 Gandhian Era With the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi in 1915, the nationalist movement in India entered into a new phase. Before the arrival of Gandhiji, the nationalist movement was dominated by the educated elite or the intelligentsia. He emerged as a mass leader and gradually turned the movement into a mass movement involving peasants, tribals, students, women and factory workers. Rollet Act, 1919 Rollet Act passed in 1919 was a serious blow to the Indian nationalist movement. It empowered the government to arrest and search people and property without warrant. 
to detain anyone without trial or conviction for two years, to try people before special courts with no right to appeal. It gave the government extraordinary powers to repress the political activities. Passing the Rollet Act caused serious resentment among Indians. On 6th of April 1919, Mahatma Gandhi gave a call for a nationwide Satyagraha against the Rollet Act. This Satyagraha turned out to be the first All India struggle against the British government. The Jallianwala Bagh Massacre, 13th April 1919 On 13th April, the Baisakhi Day, a peaceful meeting was held at Jallianwala Bagh, Amritsar, to protest against the Rollet Act. The arrest of two Indian national leaders, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu, There were several women and children among those who had gathered in the park. The park was enclosed on all sides with buildings and had only one exit. General Dyer, the British military commander, ordered his riflemen to shoot at the crowd. More than 1,500 were injured and approximately 1,000 died. The shooting was followed by martial law in Punjab. To protest against the incident, great poet and Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore renounced the knighthood awarded to him by the British Crown in 1915. Gandhi began organizing his first large-scale non-violent satyagraha and the non-cooperation movement, 1920 to 1922. Pilafat and non-cooperation movement. The Khilafat movement was started by Ali brothers. Shawat Ali and Muhammad Ali to protest against the injustice done to Turkey after the First World War. In 1920, the Khilafat leaders and the Indian National Congress decided to fight together for the cause of Khilafat as well as redressal of wrongs done to Punjab and attainment of Swaraj. The Non-Cooperation Movement In 1920, at its Calcutta session, the Indian National Congress gave a call for a new movement called the Non-Cooperation Movement. Many Indians gave up their honorary titles received from the British government. Gandhiji gave up the title of Kesari Hind. Thousands of students boycotted government schools and colleges. Many lawyers gave up their law practices. Elections to legislatures were boycotted. People lit public bonfires of foreign cloth. People resigned from government positions and refused to join military. Non-payment of taxes. The movement spread all over the country. Shops selling foreign goods were picketed. Khadi and Charkha became a symbol of self-reliance. By the end of 1921, approximately 30,000 people and several leaders except Gandhi were imprisoned. Withdrawal of the Movement In February 1922, a peaceful procession of about 3,000 peasants were provoked by the police who opened fire on them. The angry peasants retaliated by setting fire to the police station in Chauri Chaura. In this mob violence, 22 policemen were killed. On hearing that his own people had resorted to violence, Gandhiji was very disturbed 
as he was against any kind of violence and therefore he called off the movement. The Swaraj Party After calling off the non-cooperation movement, the Congress was divided into two groups. Pro-changes included leaders such as Chitaran Jandas, Motilal Nehru and Vithal Bhai Patel. They formed the Swaraj Party in 1923. They argued that the party should fight elections to the councils and join the government. Simon Commission In 1927, the British government sent Sir John Simon to India to study the grievances of the Indian people and to recommend constitutional reforms in India. This commission was called Simon Commission. The Congress boycotted this commission because there was no Indian representation in this commission. It did not contain any hope for Swaraj for the Indians. In February 1928, when the Simon Commission arrived in India, it was met with demonstrations and banners saying, Simon, go back. Purna Swaraj as the aim of Congress In December 1929, the annual session of the Congress was held in Lahore under the presidentship of Jawaharlal Nehru. In this session, the Congress declared Purna Swaraj, or complete independence, as its ultimate goal. It was decided to launch the civil disobedience movement. It was decided to observe 26th January every year as Independence Day all over the country. Civil Disobedience Movement In 1930, the Congress launched another mass movement called the Civil Disobedience Movement under the leadership of Gandhi. As a symbol of disobedience, it was decided to break the unjust SALT law non-violently by defying the SALT Act. The movement started with the Dandi March. Gandhi started from Sabarmati Ashram with 79 followers on a 240-mile march to the coastal town of Dandi, Gujarat, on the Arabian Sea and made salt from the sea water. The Quit India Movement, 1942 On 8th August 1942, the Congress met in Bombay and decided to launch the Quit India Movement, another non-violent mass movement under the leadership of Gandhi to compel the British to grant complete independence to India. It demanded the immediate end of the British rule. Gandhiji asked the people to do or die, karo ya maro, in their attempt to make British quit India. Indian National Army, INA Indian National Army, Azad Hind Forge, played an important role in the nationalist movement. In 1941, Subhash Chandra Bose secretly left his Calcutta home for Singapore via Germany and raised the Azad Hind Forge or the Indian National Army to free India from British control. It consisted of Indian soldiers and officers of the British Army who had been taken prisoners by the Japanese during the Second World War. The slogan of Dilli Chalo and Jai Hind inspired the people. The Cabinet Mission
In 1946, Clement Attlee, the Prime Minister of Britain, sent cabinet mission to India to negotiate transfer of power. It proposed the following: formation of an interim government, setting up a constituent assembly composed of members elected by the provincial legislatures and the nominees of rulers of the princely states. Accordingly, an interim government headed by Jawaharlal Nehru was formed. The Constituent Assembly was also formed in 1946 and it started working on the Constitution of India. Muslim League continued to demand separate country for Muslims. Communal Rights The most tragic part of the nationalist movement was the communal riots that broke out in many parts of the country. Thousands of Hindus and Muslims were killed in the riots. Mahatma Gandhi was greatly disturbed and he toured the affected areas to restore peace. Independence and Mountbatten Plan Lord Mountbatten the new viceroy came to India in 1947 he presented a plan called the Mountbatten plan for the division of the country into two independent nations India and Pakistan Mahatma Gandhi was very reluctant to accept the partition but he and others agreed to the partition to avoid further bloodshed The Mountbatten plan was passed in the British House of Commons on 14th of July 1947 as India Independence Act 1947. It provided end of the British rule over India from 15th August 1947. India was partitioned into two independent dominions, India and Pakistan. Princely states were given a choice to join India or Pakistan or continue as independent kingdoms. It laid guidelines for the transfer of powers to both the governments. On 15th August 1947, India achieved independence after 200 years of British rule. Jawaharlal Nehru became the first prime minister of independent India.